Hi everyone and welcome. We're so glad you could be here with us today. I'm the, I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we're the creators of the blog and this YouTube channel called Nutmeg Notebook. And this is where we share with you all about our whole food plant exclusive lifestyle. So plant exclusive? That's right, plant exclusive. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Like what do all what these about my things whole food mean? Plant based lifestyle. <laughs> well, are you changing my lifestyle? I'm not changing your lifestyle. Okay. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about how we call things and what we call things and why we call things how we call them. <laughs> what? Wow. I'm confused already. <laughs> when? How? Uh... Okay. Well, yeah. Today's show is a about uh, uh, WFAs. No. No. W, w... PBAs. PBAs. Plant-based... Acronyms. Acronyms. <laughs> so we just thought, you know, we get a lot of questions. Sometimes we forget, especially in social media, when I post something on Facebook or Instagram, and if I use an acronym, some, you know, people who are new to this community of eating plant based. I, I'm going to jump over and do my sound. Okay, text, sure. So I'm going to pop you over here. Okay, sure. The, oftentimes they're like, what are you talking about? What does that stand for? So I told Tom today, I know we have a lot of new people that are watching us now and new people that are following us on social media as well. People that are new to plant-based community. And so I said, you know, maybe it would be fun to go over just some of the acronyms as well as some of the things that we talk about in plant-based that maybe some people aren't familiar with yet. So we forget when we've been eating this way for a long time, what it's like to be new and trying to absorb all of that information, which there's so much of it. So, so anyway, I thought it would be fun and I hope you guys will enjoy it and chime in. And if there's some acronyms that you know of that I don't mention, please put them in the comment section. If you want to ask a question, if you could preface the question with four question marks, type your question and end with four question marks. That just helps Tom to spot those in the chat feed because you guys get really chatty and it moves fast and it's very easy for him to um, miss one of the questions. Also in the chat feed, we have our moderators with us today. I believe Tiffany, Jesse and Randy are there and um, they're very well versed in the um, plant-based language and how everything works and they oftentimes will ask question answer questions they'll ask some questions too but they can answer a lot of your questions as well so welcome everybody um so one of the first ones of course is the wfpb and we see that all the time as hashtags or just you know it's an abbreviation it stands for whole food plant based then there's a little bit of controversy about that because some people who are still eating animal products consider themselves that they're whole food plant-based because you know they eat some broccoli with their steak and that's not the meaning that those of us who are in the plant-based community associate with wfpb we feel that that means that we only eat plants so that's why it's starting to become popular to say that you're whole food plant exclusive. And I think that Dr. Goldhammer from the True North Health Center kind of got that ball rolling with calling it um, whole food plant exclusive. And, and I like that and I've actually been using that a little bit in my social media postings because it does denote that we aren't eating any animal products. We are only eating from the plant world. So there's also PBD, which is plant-based diet. And there's PBN, which is plant-based news. Are you going to come back on with me? Oh. Well, they get longer. You've got your W-F-P-B-S-O-F-A-S. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. 
<laughs> and yeah. that really, I think for the newer people, that's really confusing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. it took me a while to understand so fast. But yeah, I'll, I'll let you continue. That one just kind of jumped out at me. No, we, no worries. We discussed a lot of these earlier. And we, didn't, we did. We, and, and we didn't touch on sophists. Earlier, oh no but, but i have it i have it it's have coming it up yeah you were reading my were you cheating and looking at my notes no no randy <laughs> randy brought that to my attention it's yes completely randy's fault i had nothing to do with it so then <laughs> the, you'll also sometimes see pb which is plant-based and i think you'll start to see pe which is going to be for plant exclusive because I think, you know, as we get more into it, we're defining it more. And then as Tom and Randy were pointing out, there's SOS free. Now, some people post, I'm SOS. Well, that SOS stands for salt, oil, and sugar. So that doesn't denote that you are SOS free. So you wanna be sure and put the free behind that because that is showing that you are salt, oil, and sugar free. So if you just put, I'm plant-based SOS, it looks like you're plant-based, but you include salt, oil, and sugar. Then there is SOFAS free. That's S-O-F-A-S, and that stands for salt, oil, flour, alcohol, and sugar free. So if your sofa is free, and that was really coined by my friend, Chef AJ. And of course, I'm sure <laughs> that um, if you've watched any of my videos, you've heard me talk about Chef AJ. And this is her book and her program that I followed um, in 2015 to get to my healthy weight and more importantly, be able to maintain it for the past six years. And so she also co-authored this book with Glenn Mercer, Own Your Health. And these are full, both full of SO, SOFAs, S-O-F-A-S, free recipes, plant-based, SOFAs free. And so there we go, see more acronyms. Jesse said, how many are there? There's a lot. And then there's GF. What does that stand for? Gluten-free. And I follow a gluten-free uh, diet because I have a gluten sensitivity. And gluten is the protein that is found in wheat, barley, and rye. And then there's like triticale, there's some a few other farro, there's some other um, grains that it's also found in. And so I'm gluten free. So you'll see a lot of times that things will say whole food, plant based, GF free, and that is for gluten free. Then there's non GMO. What does that stand for? Well, in the US, if a product is labeled as non GMO, that means that the that it was produced without being genetically modified in the laboratory. So in the plant world, what we're talking about is then the plant seeds were not genetically modified. Also in the United States, anything that is USDA certified organic, it, and that is the United States Agricultural Department, if they have said that something has been certified organic, that means that it has to be non-GMO. So if you are buying, for instance, this recently came up, um, someone emailed me and said that um, her husband wouldn't eat the corn she buys. She was buying organic corn because he said all corn has been genetically modified. Well, if you are buying organic certified corn in the United States, if it's been certified by the USDA, then it is non-GMO. And then we have Nutritarian. Well, what is a Nutritarian? Well, that was coined by, oh, did I forget to get his book out? That was coined by um, Dr. Joel Furman in about 2003 in his book, Eat to Live. Uh, basically, it's plant-based with limited processed foods and it's nutrient-dense. So nutritarian, so a nutrient dense diet derived from whole food, unprocessed plants, also SOS free. And I thought I grabbed one of his 
books, but I know I have. You can go grab it. It's okay. I have one right here. It's not the Eat to Live, but this is um, Dr. Joel Furman's Fast Food Genocide. He's written a ton of books, and they're all about um, health and eating a plant exclusive diet and the correlation between our diet and lifestyle related diseases. And he was the first plant-based physician that I found and that I started following. Um, so anyway, that's Dr. Joel Furman. And then, um, you have a question, Tom? Oh. <laughs> I thought I saw you raising your hand. Yeah, I did start to raise my hand. There's, there's a lot of acronym suggestions coming up on the news feed. Some of them are, are hilarious. So, uh, hello everybody that's been jumping on more recently. Susan's here, Reeves is here. Um, hey, Reeves. Diane is here. Uh, Cheryl is here. Um, some it, it scrolled up, but somebody said that you're now you're you're W F P E S O F A S T F. <laughs> okay. Tammy is is yeah W F P Sophus G F. Wow. That's, that's you. It's a lot. That's a mouthful. Yeah. And then also it occurred to me. Um, did you remember Pip? Potatoes in your purse. Not yet. Oh yeah, okay, Pip is good. Pip. We'll do Pip too. And then another one has been all uh, a Bip. Uh, I have to. Uh, uh, who gets the credit for that? It's in the chat feed here. Bim, uh, Balsamic in my purse. Oh, I love Bim. that. Bim. Oh, I love that. That's great, you guys. This is great. So and then. Um, These are so cute. Okay, and okay. then Ann has a real question here. Okay. I'll let you jump back on. Sure. So Ann says, corn says only organic, then it is not organic certified. If corn only says organic, is it certified organic? Uh, that's it's, a good... There's got to be a sticker on it. It's got to say certified. That's a good question, and Google that. Somebody Google that right now and let me know what it says. Okay. Okay, so I know that... Anything that the USDA certifies as organic has to be non-GMO. So I don't know if corn grown in Mexico that says that it is organic, if that means that it's non-GMO. That I don't know. So that's a that's a very good question. Yeah, because so somebody has to do with the pesticides, how the ground is treated. Uh, whether they're sprayed with things and the you know. and the usda has also made the that it has to also be non-gmo okay when they certify something as being organic okay okay so we did nutritarian and then also are you going to stay on camera no or? i'm going to come back to okay that. then also within the nutritarian and you might want to bring this up on screen the g-bombs from Dr. Furman. So when people, when you see them talking about their G-bombs, that is an acronym that Dr. Furman came up with. And that stands for greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds. And those are the most health-promoting anti-cancer superfoods on the planet. And he instructs his patients to strive to get G bombs in every day. So greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, okay, berries, that, and seeds. That, that's what I was asking this morning. What what does the Oh what is the meaning of that? Yeah. Yeah. So, it's it's so that you have that little acronym. Yeah, beans, so onions, that you, mushrooms, berries and seeds. That that's what I was like, what was the what are the bombs? Because cause G stands for greens. So what does it mean? Because they have an explosion of nutrition or what? They do. And he wants you to try to incorporate all of those things every day because they're nutrient dense, they're anti cancer. Okay, so we'll put this in the legitimate acronym bucket. Yes, then, yes, absolutely. Random... Okay, and okay. then go bring up the starchivore. Okay. Okay, so then there's starchivore. You'll see some people say, well, I'm a starchivore. Well, that is associated with Dr. McDougall, and he wrote the starch solution and the maximum weight loss plan. Oh, I'm not on camera. I'll show those when we come back. Well, you, well, no, that's okay. Um, basically. You are on camera, you're in the little okay. window. Okay, oh, well, but they can't really see the books in the little window. I'll wait till I come back. Um, so Starchivore 
um, is yeah. basically refers to someone who eats a plant-based diet that includes a lot of unprocessed starches. So potatoes, rice, millet, uh, sweet potatoes, beans, um, just unrefined carbohydrates. And that would be a starchivore. And so, and he wrote these books. You see, I've had, a, I've read a lot of books, you guys. <laughs> I love the plant-based doctors. And so people who um, follow McDougal, they either call themselves starchivores or McDouglers. And then, um, and then sometimes, and we already talked about uh, Chef AJ, <clears throat> but sometimes you'll hear something about the pleasure trap. And this is a book that was written by Dr. Doug Lyle and um, Dr. Alan Goldhammer. And this book really explained to me that I wasn't broken because after yo-yo dieting for like 40 years, you know, I would lose, I could always lose weight. I just couldn't maintain it. Um, I really thought like something was totally screwed up with my brain. I thought I am broken. I am so broken. What's wrong with me? And after I read The Pleasure Trap, um, then I discovered there wasn't anything wrong with my brain. I was just trying to eat the wrong foods in moderation. And they're foods that my brain just will not allow me to eat in moderation. And that's what I learned from the pleasure trap. I actually, right after I had decided to go whole food plant-based, I was um, fortunate enough to hear Dr. Doug Lyle speak in Sacramento at a veg fest and he talked about the pleasure trap and then I bought his book and it was so eye-opening. So I highly recommend this if you have any trouble with um, controlling yourself around certain foods. He talks all about basically the SOS, the salt, oil, sugar, the trifecta, when those things are combined and um, you know what the food industry does to hook us on that stuff. And so this is a really good read. And so that's when people are talking about the pleasure trap, they're talking about getting sucked into the processed foods that are full of the SOS, salt, oil, and sugar. So this one, you definitely should read. Okay, then we have Tom. Come back on. What does W-Y-W stand for? That's well your world. <laughs> Good job, when honey. You get your magical stardust in your galaxy in your nooch and a number of, oh there's another acronym there's another well, it's not an acronym, not acronym it's a contraction it's yeah yeah now, so no, no in in chat feeds i've noticed a lot i was telling tammy you know I, w y w shows up often in our communications whether it's a text from from one of our plant-based friends or or something in a chat feed somewhere yeah so um, well your world is run by dylan and reeves and reeves might still be in the um chat with us and they have a whole line of wonderful sos free products so w so w y w is sos free <laughs> that's and right it helps you live as uh, so fast <laughs> <No. WFPE. laughs> oh this is getting crazy that's crazy see why we needed to have this class today so that we could straighten this all out anyway we love their products so they have everything from seasonings to marinara, uh, pizza sauce, cheese sauce, pancake mix, um, salad dressings, an Indian sauce, an Asian sauce, ketchup, barbecue sauce. I mean, the list goes on and on. And in addition to that, they have cooking classes. And so if you're new to plant-based or you've been doing plant-based, for a while, you really should sign up for their cooking classes because they do two cooking classes a month and they last about an hour and a half to two hours. And most of the time, the food that they make is really super simple, but they show you exactly how to do it and you get printable recipes. And if you, whenever you join, you get access also to all the previous uh, videos and access to be able to print the recipes and you get a 10% discount on their um, food products and I believe it's only like 
fifteen dollars a month. It's it's like ridiculously read the information low. To post that if you wish. Yeah. So Reeves, if you want to post a link to that so people can sign up. Now they just had a class yesterday, so there won't be a class next Saturday. In two weeks, there will be another class. So that is a really great way to get introduced to plant-based, have an immediate community because they also have a Facebook page um, that you can join, which is a wonderful place then to ask questions and learn about whole food plant-based. And if you, even if you have cooked, but you're coming from the standard American diet, I was a really good cook before becoming plant-based, but you know, I had to relearn how to do so many things, especially doing them SOS free, which stands for salt, oil, sugar free. And so, so we love yeah, Dylan Randy and Reed. You can't post a chat, a, a link in the chat that YouTube won't let them do that. Oh, it won't? No. Oh, really? So. Yeah. Oh, so only you, oh, I didn't know that. I but didn't know they go, could. But if she went to comments, just comments below the video, she can put it in comments. Okay. And then and then um, I'll get a notice from YouTube that somebody's trying to put a link on our comments and then I can approve you it. You can or, approve it. Or disapprove it. Perfect. Yeah. That'll work. Well, do we have a Well Your World link I'll, I'll, I'll in the... Look, I'll take a look in the, the chat. You want to grab a question that's, that sure. came in? Sure. Yeah. While, while, yeah. We were, while we were messing around there. Um, it was about soy curls, and I'm looking for those question marks. I know that whoever posted it put them on there. Okay, um, so soy curls are a um, minimally processed soy product. They take soybeans, and I don't know exactly yeah, how they yeah, do I, it. Yeah, What's the question? Here's the actual question. This is from Gail. I only buy organic tofu. Soy curls say non-GMO, but don't say organic. Are they okay to have yeah you know um we have them on a rare occasion i do buy them and we will have them like our um when we, when we have a big family gathering i'll do like a barbecue um mix with the um soy curls so um and so we we're okay with having them once in a great while a few times a year and uh, I don't know about the pesticide level though so we don't know well these are saying organic they're saying they're saying non -GMO, gmo but they don't say organic right so I'm not sure but you know write the company and ask the company I think would be a really good thing mm -hmm. I know um, I know that a lot of people in the plant-based community do buy them and do use them and we have a friend who's a registered dietitian, plant-based registered dietitian, and um, she buys them and serves them to her family. So I figured if she she approved of them, that they must be um, pretty safe to eat because um, she feeds them to her kids. So, but very good question, very good question. And you guys, you can buy those from Amazon or directly from the company, and they're dehydrated and you have to reconstitute them. So you just soak them in hot water or some broth and then squeeze out the liquid and then you proceed to use them similar to like you would chicken and they're kind of um, they kind of look like chicken cut up chicken strips in a way and you can do a lot of things with them Randy put the link in evidently moderators can post links oh fantastic so, so Randy put that in for us thank, thank you, you Randy. thank you Randy Okay, so then you might see some things that say F-O-K. F-O-K. That's going to stand for Forks Over Knives. And Tom, I think you can pull up the documentary for that. So the Forks Over Knives documentary was, um, it, it was, is a documentary that really opens up people's eyes to lifestyle related diseases and how the standard american diet contributes to yeah. poor health this is actually the website okay it's the website it's, it's not the you know, that's, oh it's not the documentary so um so find the documentary and watch it if you haven't it's a great one to recommend to your friends they have a magazine that comes out i think like quarterly um, which is really nice. And Well Your World was just profiled 
in there um, as well as local spicery and California balsamic some of our favorite plant-based companies um, were just in the new issue that came out it's on your newsstands now you can get it wherever magazines are sold and um, so the so FOK was in there yeah 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 a lot of our friends um, were in there with their products as well as chef AJ was profiled in there as well so and they have a whole line of cookbooks as well so um, that's FOK then you might see some things about the WHO which stands for uh, World Health Organization which you know throughout the pandemic we've heard a lot of things from them and then if you hear about the China study. So that well, let's let's explain the NHA and then the healthscience.org because that creates a little confusion on the front side of things. Okay, well, I have that next, but oh, I thought it's you, you mentioned up. NHA. I thought you had no. Heard. I said the WHO. You're only half listening to me. <laughs> okay, okay well, I, I never. I mentioned the WHO is what I had talked about. Okay. Okay, so then you might hear people refer to the China study. So the China study was a study conducted by T. Colin Campbell of Cornell University and along with some of his colleagues, and it was the most comprehensive nutritional study known as the China study. And they compared in China the communities in China really would stay within their community. So the rural communities ate a mostly plant-based diet. And the um, larger, more metropolitan areas, the people ate more meat. And so they did, I think it was a 10-year study, and they studied the correlation between a plant-based diet and lifestyle-related diseases and a not plant-based diet and lifestyle-related uh, diseases. And of course, they came up with seeing that the fewer animal products you ate, the less coronary heart disease, cancer, and diabetes, and so forth that there was. And so you'll hear a lot of things about the China study. And, um, and they have a website, um, you can go there, lots of wonderful information that you can find there as well. And then we're going to talk about the NHA now, Tom. And you have a website to bring up for the NHA. So the NHA is the National Health Association, and you've heard us talk about that, as well as the Health Science Magazine. And for the fall edition of the Health Science Magazine, our own Tiffany, one of our moderators, her recipes are going to be appearing in the new edition that will be coming out soon. So um, Tom has the website up there for the National Health Association. They promote, of course, an SOS-free, plant-exclusive lifestyle. So they just had a conference in June, and um, everyone tells us it's one of the most wonderful conferences they've ever been. Dylan from Well Your World is on the board, as well as um, Brittany from the Giruti family. And um, we really like Mark and Wanda Huberman, who run um, the NHA. And it's, uh, they have a quarterly magazine. It costs $35 if you live in the domestic United States. It's $35 uh, a year for a membership. And that gets you their quarterly magazine, magazine as well as access to all of the previous um, magazines online and as well as a lot of books that you can read for free online and so we really encourage you to um, sign up and get the magazine and maybe think about going to the conference next year you can already go online and um, register for it um, it will be in June again next year and this time last year, my recipes were profiled, um, were in the um, fall issue. So if you sign up now, you'll get access 
to that. And if you sign up now, you'll also get the new fall issue. You'll get a hard copy of the new fall issue. When it comes out, it hasn't come out yet. So, so we're very excited for our Tiffany to be in there. Yes, Tom. And, and just by way of clarification, the, um, if you Google NHA or National Health Association even, you're going to get other associations, including the National Health Association plan, the plant-based organization. Uh -huh. um, but the website, the one to go to is the healthscience.org which is the name of the magazine. So right. the NHA acronym dates back, you know, quite a ways back because it's quite a historic association. Right. So so there's that little bit of confusion. If you're searching, you're going to wind up with, with some medical associations that are not our uh, National Health Association, Healthy Living Association. So anyway. Sorry, just to, I just remembered I wanted to get something off the fridge. Oh, the... <laughs> The red line, you pulled the red line down. Okay. I did. Um, so another acronym is PCRM, and that stands for the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. And I think you have them, you have a website to bring up for PCRM. Uh, so you can just Google PCRM and their website will come up. And um, Dr. Barnard has written a lot of books. He uh, runs PCRM, of course, with a big group of people. And this is a nice little book to give to people <clears throat> who are plant curious because he just has a wonderful way of explaining and making it seem so easy to decide to adopt a plant exclusive lifestyle. And so this is just a nice little book. It's not too big. It, it's not too deep into the science, but it just gives people like a really nice starting place. And I think it's only around $8 or something. Mm, I can't see, but well, no, it's more than that. It says it's 14. I think it's less than that now though on Amazon. So anyway, PCRM, they have a 21 day kickstart program that is free. People can go on their website and sign up for it for free and you'll get a um, menu plan for 21 days to help you get started if you're new to plant-based eating. They also have food for life instructors. We have a, probably several of them that are watching um, this program with us right now and Tiffany, one of our moderators, is a food for life instructor. Um, we know several of them, actually. We have quite a few of them here in our area, here in Northern California as well. So they do a lot of great work, a lot of research in, uh, regarding health, and um, we just, we love PCRM. Yeah, all of these books you've got in your book. Yes, list. so in, my, in our Amazon store, it's amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash nutmeg notebook, or you can just Google um, Nutmeg Notebook Amazon and our store um, page will show up <clears throat> and we have all of these books are listed. Another thing that you'll hear us talk about quite a bit as well as um, Chef AJ and some other um, people is calorie density. What is calorie density? You're going to hear about it because in the plant-based community we don't count calories or points or micronutrients or um, carbs or we don't have to count any of that and if we want to lose weight what we recommend is that and I don't know if you can get uh, can I have a get a close-up oh can you bring one up on the oh that would be so excellent great then they don't have to try to see this little one that I have okay so <clears throat> Calorie density is just the average calories per pound of a group of foods. And so as you can see on the chart that non-starchy vegetables are only 100 calories per Oops. pound. What'd you do? I bumped around, but that one was really dark. I'm gonna find a different okay, one. Okay, he's gonna find a different one. Um, fruit are 300 calories per pound. And unrefined complex carbohydrates, like we're talking potatoes and whole grains and legumes, are 400 to 600 calories per pound. And so Chef AJ, on her calorie chart, calorie density chart, she just drew a red line between 600 and 750. And um, the 
theory is, and it works because this is what I use, is if you keep your food choices every day at 600 calories per pound or less, you will just naturally lose weight and get to your healthy weight. And when you get to your healthy weight, you just keep doing that to maintain your healthy weight. Because as you can see, everything above 600 calories per pound and above is higher fat foods or they are processed foods. And so not only are those foods that are 600 calories and less per pound, low calorie density, they're high nutrients. And so they're nutrient dense. And so these are the foods that we need to be eating the most of in order to have optimal health. And now you can see that avocados are 750 calories per pound. And yes, they're full of healthy um, fats and they're absolutely delicious. But if you're trying to lose weight, especially if you are someone who has yo-yo dieted, the extra fat in avocados can be the difference between being able to lose weight or not lose weight. And then it just keeps going up from there. And you can see um, chocolate, nuts, and oils. Oils are the worst at 4,000 calories per pound. So here's the Here's the quick synopsis on calorie density. I'm going back to you because this isn't really clear. Oh, that one's really bad. Um, well, here's this one. I don't know if you can get this well, in no, they, focus. They, it, it, so, it's a lot of fine print. So in studies that they have done in laboratories with live people, they have discovered that we all eat about the, the same amount of food per day. I eat a different quantity than Tom, but each individual eats, let's say I eat three pounds of food a day. So you can see on the calorie density chart, if I'm eating high fat foods, the 750 per calories per pound and up, if I'm concentrating on eating the higher calorie density foods every day, it's going to be much more difficult to lose weight than if I concentrate on the lower calorie density foods. And so if I keep it at 600 calories or less per pound, let's say I eat three pounds of food a day, then I'm eating about 1800 calories um, or, or even less per day just by deciding to choose low calorie density foods. So it makes it really easy. Um, plus, after you neuroadapt, you absolutely love those lower calorie density foods and it's very easy to stick with it. Now, since we're talking about foods, let's talk about some names or acronyms for things that kind of mess people up sometimes. You'll oftentimes see me um, post in on social media about JSPs. Well, what are JSPs? Well, that stands for Japanese sweet potatoes, and that is like my all-time favorite potato, especially for the sweet potatoes. And um, you can Google those, and you can find a picture of them online. They're purplish, reddish purple on the outside, and then the the potato inside is creamy color, and if you oven roast them, they're very, very sweet and absolutely delicious. And I make croutons out of them. I use the Well Your World Everything Bagel um, seasoning and coat them in that and air fry them, and they're absolutely amazing. And then there's Hannah yams, and in some places those are called white sweet potatoes um, and the Japanese sweet potatoes can be called Jersey yams too so it kind of depends on where you live you'll most often find them at ethnic stores either Mexican or Asian stores or Whole Foods maybe Trader Joe's they have the Mirasaki ones um, and some health food stores and I think here Winco also has them but they're not organic then you'll see people posting about Buddha bowls or nourish bowls. What the heck is a Buddha bowl or a nourish bowl? Well, those are something that um, vegan restaurants have come up with. And those are simply like whatever you want to put in them. Most often they have grains, 
greens and beans in them. Um, so, you know, maybe there will be spinach or kale and some rice and maybe some brown rice and some sweet potatoes and some black beans and then some kind of a sauce put over it. So, you know, we like to make those ourselves here at home um, and they're just delicious. So they can either be called a Buddha bowl or a nourish bowl. And basically you're just choosing healthy, low calorie density items to put together in a bowl to create a meal. And then you can, you know, put a salad dressing on it or just vinegar or salsa or something like that. And it's absolutely delicious. Earlier, Tom mentioned nooch. And nooch is something that vegans came up with to call nutritional yeast. And nutritional yeast is used in a lot of our cheese sauces. And I say cheese, we, we say, we spell it C-H-E-E-Z-E, -E -E, just to make it different from the standard American diet cheese. Um, and we buy our nutritional yeast from Well Your World. They have one that tastes really good. The different brands do taste different. And theirs is unfortified. Um, it's very economical. And when we need to place an order again for that soon. Um, and you'll see, like I have that in several different recipes. I use it. It just gives you a little bit of a cheesy flavor. Um, you'll see people posting about the IP. What is an IP? It's an instant pot. Well, what's an instant pot? Well, it's an electric pressure cooker. And those are super popular in the plant-based community because they cook everything so quickly. And once we put everything in them and start them, we don't have to look after them. You know, if you put chili or a super stew on the stove top, um, even on a low heat, you've got to keep going back and stirring it and making sure that it's not boiling over or that all the liquid's not evaporating or that things aren't getting stuck and burnt to the bottom of the, the pot. And in the electric pressure cookers, you don't have to worry about that. And they're sold everywhere now. I mean, Sam's Club, Walmart, Target, JCPenney's, uh, Amazon, Costco, Sam's Club, like everywhere you go now, Bed Bath & Beyond, every place has, um, the most common one is the Instant Pot. And they're not scary, they're not like your grandma's electric pressure cooker. They're very easy to use and very safe to use and you can find tons of recipes for them. I have a lot on my YouTube channel as well as, um, the Crocs in the Kitchen and Well Your World and Brittany from the Giruti family and Chef AJ and, you know, all the plant-based YouTubers. Um, another thing you'll see people post about are bloobs. Not boobs, but bloobs. And that stands for blueberries. And, you know, blueberries are something that Dr. Furman says, you know, we should have those every day. So, and now maybe you want to talk about, I need to take a drink because I'm getting hoarse, <clears throat> about joy. Oh, okay. J-O-I. And you can tell the people about joy. Okay. All right. Um, and then there's a couple of questions I want to, I got to go back up and find. Okay. Misty Blue had a question, but I forgot what it was now. I got to go back and find it. Um, yeah, when, when we interviewed the first time, uh, Christina and Tony from Joy Plant Mill Company, it's like... Um, I thought I had it figured out. What Tammy started talking about it. I, no, I think we ordered some. I mean, Joy. <clears throat> that's kind of a. It just says Joy. Their their ads and their banner just says J O I. It doesn't say anything else. And we figured out it meant just one ingredient. But then their website is A D D J O I. You know, small lowercase A D D and then uppercase J O I. And so. So we feel okay. Well, they're talking about adding joy to your life, and they're just they're playing off of that. Well, sure enough, during the interview, we had uh, they said yes. That's exactly why they chose that website because they want to add joy to everyone's life by giving them a healthy alternative to harmful animal products mm -hmm. um, through the through their plant based uh, offering. Oh, I need to. Yeah, I'm kind of off mic a little bit while I'm talking. You gotta speak so, up. 
So, well, I had the mic pointed more at you. So we're, we're sharing the microphone today. Um, so anyway, uh, TS says, you mentioned yo-yo dieting. How exactly does that interf interfere with current weight loss? Does it somehow affect hormones? So you've talked about that before, that when you go up and down and up and down and up and down, it's more difficult each and every time. It is. Because your body gets a conditioned response to hang on to every fat cell that can too and not release it because it knows that you're trying to starve it and so it holds on even harder i guess i yeah. just answered your question that i asked you mm -hmm. but as long as i wasn't mansplaining don't mansplain okay yeah right. so the studies show that um if you and i are the same age the same height and the same weight and i've been a yo-yo dieter and you haven't i have to eat 25 percent fewer calories to maintain the same weight that you have. And so, um, which is, you know, it, it's frustrating, but it is just mm. the way, it is just the way it is. So Dr. Roseanne Oliveira talks a lot about that. I believe that Chef AJ interviewed her. And um, so on Chef AJ's YouTube channel, you should be able to find some interviews with Roseanne Oliveira. And she talks about um, that, that if you've been a yo-yo dieter, then, you know, you're just going to have to suck it up buttercup and you're going to have to get used to the fact that you're going to have to restrict, um, a little bit more than somebody mm -hmm. who's never been a yo-yo dieter, which is very true for me because I very easily gain weight, even, even eating the way I eat. So, all right. Jesse says that's unfair. Um, it is unfair. Yeah. 19, <laughs> I agree. 1922 Misty Blue was asking earlier when you were kind of taking a deep dive into the books, are there any official plant-based book clubs around? The only one I know of is what Gustavo is doing uh -huh. on his focus seen on, on one, one book at a time. He's starting one on um, the Pleasure Trap is his next book. Yeah, and so if you, were to, if you were to Google Gustavo... Yeah, Gustavo could, Tolosa, because uh -huh. he's got a couple of different names in his on his media presence out there because he's done different projects. But, but I bet if you Google that with book book club, because he's doing some online book clubs where he's done yeah. Chef AJ's books and Dr. Uh, McDougal yeah. books. So, so Misty Blue, that's <laughs> the only one that comes that to my we mind know right of. now. Right yeah. now is what Gustavo is <clears throat> doing. And he's been doing that sort of thing for a while. He has. Um you know, going kind of in depth on a subject with different with different plant based resources for doctors. Mm -hmm. So okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna Google it just to see what happens while you continue. Okay. Did you get your drink of? of I did. Beetroot <clears throat> there. Okay. I'm still having a thing. Okay, and then you'll see some things about um, flax egg and what on earth is a flax egg. Well, when we're doing plant based cooking, of course, we're not using oil. We're not using eggs, especially you know, um, well, in any of our cooking and where you're going to miss that is probably when you're, you go to make some kind of a baked good, like a healthy muffin or even some, um, maybe some veggie burgers because you know, the eggs act as a binder as well. And so a flax egg is where you take one tablespoon of ground flax seeds and combine it with three tablespoons of water and then you just let it sit in a little dish for 15 minutes or so and it becomes kind of gelatinous and the flax does have fat in it but it's healthy omega-3 fats which are good for you and then you can use that in whatever you're making and it will act as a binder and that's called a flax egg and then we already touched on, um, you'll see cheese spelled C-H-E-E-Z-E. -E -E, and that just lets people know that, you know, if it says vegan cheese sauce and it's spelled that way, it just lets people <clears throat> know that it has no dairy in it. Well, I guess if it said vegan in front of it, you would know it had no dairy in it. Um, you might see people referring to eat the rainbow. And that just means to choose a wide variety of fruits and vegetables so that you're getting a lot of color in every day from a wide variety of them rather than eating the exact same 
fruits and vegetables all the time because the different colors mean you're getting different nutrients, you're getting different vitamins, you're getting different antioxidants. And so you want to try to have a wide variety. Also, it's very good for our gut biome to change things up and to have different greens and different grains um, because now they know there is a direct correlation between the healthy, uh, how healthy our gut biome is and our brain because our gut and our brain talk to each other and the healthier our gut is, the healthier our brain is. Um, you might see some people post about FOMO, F-O-M-O, -O, and that is an acronym for fear of missing out. And so, um, you know, a lot of people don't want to miss podcasts, the plant-based podcast or the plant-based YouTube videos or they might be transitioning to plant-based and they have FOMO about missing out on things that they used to eat on the standard American diet. So you'll see F-O-M-O, -O, fear of missing out. Don't get sucked into that. You know, we can only do what we can do. And, um, you know, I've been eating this way since 2013 and I don't miss the stuff that I used to eat. In the beginning I did, absolutely in the beginning I did, but I don't miss that stuff now. You have to allow yourself time to neuroadapt and then you're gonna find out that this food is absolutely delicious. And they say that you crave the foods you habitually eat. So if you habitually eat healthy food, you crave healthy food. You'll see you'll um, hear some of the doctors refer to the blue zones. What are the blue zones? Well, the blue zones are the five places in the world where people live the longest and are the healthiest. Um, and you can just Google that. There's a website, a blue zones website, and you can Google that and see. So one is in Okinawa, Japan. Sardinia, Sardinia, Italy, one's in Costa Rica, there's a place in Greece, and there's also a place, one place in the United States, and that that is a blue zone, and that is Loma Linda, California. So let's all move to Loma Linda so that we can live the longest and healthiest lives. Um, Tom talked about um, PIP, P-I-P, earlier. We have a video about PIP and that is potato in your purse. So um, take a look at that. And that is just, you know, always having f healthy food with you wherever you go. And one of our favorite things to take is a potato. It can be a Yukon gold potato that's already baked or a Japanese sweet potato or a Hannah yam or even just a regular orange garnet or jewel sweet potato and you can take it room temperature, cold, or hot. Um, BMI, that stands for your body mass index, and sometimes you'll see that come up. Um, you'll hear people talk about nutritionfacts.org, and that is our Dr. Greger. He is just well-loved in the plant-based community. If you just let me finish this, Tom, and then I'll take your question. And um, he's a wonderful writer. He has written a lot of books and he is a wonderful um, resource for science, um, anything to do with nutrition. He does not give his opinion. Tom and I have had the pleasure of hearing him speak several times. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> We've had the pleasure of hearing him speak several times in person. And someone asked him a question one time and said, what is your opinion? And he said, well, first let me tell you that I never give my opinion. I only share the science. And so if you want to know something about um, plant-based, anything to do with nutrition and plant-based, go to nutritionfacts.org and use the search bar there. And he makes all these amazing videos where he shares with you the science 
um, from the journals, the published medical journals, he shares you the actual science and what it means. And so, and his books are amazing. That was a hardback book. That's I why it know, landed so hard. it did, it did land hard. So that is a wonderful resource to be able to go to if you have questions. And then I love the bimp, balsamic in my purse. I love that. Okay, what's your question? Oh, uh, no, I, I, I did some research online while Tammy was talking on that book club question. Yeah. And I posted a link here uh, of Gustavo's Facebook page. And in that Facebook page, he is talking, let me bring it up on screen here. Um, and you're on screen too on that camera. Button. Okay. So he's talking right here uh, in this post about the start solution tomorrow, Monday, October 4th, where we, are, we start reading together one of, the mon one of the monumental pieces of literature in the plant-based world. Wow, that's high praise. Monumental, one of the most. It was a very meaningful book for you, The Pleasure Trap. Absolutely. It was, it was a, a game changer for you. Yes, so, it was. So anyway, so that I, I put the link to that page in the comments. So you're going to do a copy and paste and open a new tab or you grab it or catch it on the replay. Yeah. And I, Gustavo does a really yeah. great gonna, job. I'll we, go ahead and drop it down into the show notes so it's okay. so people don't have to go looking for it. Anyway. I just wanted to share a little like, um, you know, he has come to Sacramento area several times for conferences that we have here. And a couple years ago when he came, we did a great big potluck here. Um, we had 30, 40 people here. It was so much fun. And Gustavo is a um, classical pianist, a concert pianist. And um, him and Tom played the piano. We had a little mini concert here and it was phenomenal. It, it was just, um, we have a videotape of that somewhere. So, so anyway, it was wonderful. So a lot of times Gustavo in his, um, some of his cooking classes that he does online, he will play the piano and cook and it's just wonderful. So that's really fun. Um, <clears throat> any other questions? Uh, I'm not looking at questions. Right He's now. not looking at questions right now. Okay. So, so anyway, so those are all of them that I have. If you have something else, um, that you want to add if I've missed any of the acronyms or um, words that are maybe you know something that maybe new people wouldn't understand put them in the the chat um, I'm trying to make a nice compilation okay. of these and so I got Gustavo's uh, Facebook post page link Okay, and great. That, and that's just the link to his Facebook page as he posts more stuff. That will go down. So if you're watching this like a month from now, you, you know where to go, generally speaking. You'll have to scroll around mm. to find the Pleasure Trap post. Yeah. So he's got, you know, when you search him, he you know, his music site comes up, previous projects he's done with some of the plant-based doctors comes up, uh -huh. his Facebook page comes up. So he's got a, a lot of stuff going on here and there. So you have to kind of look, at, look for what you're looking for find what you're looking for that's right so i'm going to come back to to you guys okay and check and see if there's any questions so earlier this week i'll just fill in talking while you're doing that um we had on tuesday we um weren't with the grandchildren on tuesday and so uh, we did a an epic filming day um well we don't use film anymore recording can i say recording yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we recorded five, count them, five cooking videos that day. So we did the Caesar dressing, which I know a lot of you are super excited to get that recipe, as well as the garlic chickpea croutons, um, some peanut butter chocolate chip blondies. Yeah, they are amazing. Um, that was just an accidental recipe, but it turned out great and peanut butter banana nice cream and a chocolate sauce so by that you know i talk a lot about decision fatigue why you know batch prepping is so important because at the end of the day after you've been making decisions all day you're tired and your willpower goes away when your glucose runs low and so on and so forth i was so punchy 
by the end of the day, just from the fatigue of, you know, making all the decisions and talking about all the food and just all the prep and just everything, filming, um, that I had a lot of bloopers <laughs> towards the end of the day that day. So Tom's got a big editing job ahead of him. Sometimes I get tongue-tied when I get tired and we're trying to do the recordings. And sometimes I get the giggles um, when I get tired. What's more common is you'll very sincerely say a completely wrong word. <laughs> And just keep right on going. And not even realize it. And not even realize it. She said a completely wrong word. And, uh, and so then I have to, I hate to break, to break her stride because she's got a thought process going. So uh, speaking of thought processes, what is a food food map? F-O-D. You know, I'm struggling today because I forgot to bring down my reading glasses. Oh, is that the problem? So I'm having a hard time seeing here. Food maps. F-O-D-M-A-P-S. Oh, fermentable Oleo sacra. Okay, Jesse answered it. Thank, Thank you, you Jesse. Jesse. That's a lot of that's a lot of big words. Okay, but I don't need my glasses for that then. Yeah, um, he, that's a special diet. Yeah. Um, yeah, and moderators. It looks like you took care of the troll. We had a momentary. Oh troll dear. When, when we were off screen, but they, I think they got him. Good. Good. So uh, WS, did you touch on WS? Shows up in recipes for water saute. Oh no, I didn't. Yeah, Cheryl is. I'll add about, that. Cheryl is commenting on that on that one. That's a good one. Thank you. Uh, Misty Blue say, did you mention the the phrase the Daily Dozen? We that's. Um, I didn't, but that that that's is another common term. It is another common term, the Daily Dozen, and that comes from Dr. Greger from uh, his How Not to Die we book. We talked about G-bombs, but we didn't talk about Daily yeah, Dozen. Yeah. yeah, that's the Daily Dozen. I think I talked about that last week or the week before mm -hmm. in the video. But yeah, the Daily Dozen is another, kind of the same. Um, you know, it's um, a dozen things that uh, Dr. Greger thinks you should um, hit each day. Uh, that's probably in the How Not to Die book i know i have a magnet on it too um so you know basically just trying to eat super healthy every day is what we want to do 270. oh food maps jesse's saying here we avoid them because they're short chain they're short chain carbohydrates that are poorly absorbed in the small intestine and are prone to absorb water and ferment in the colon yeah, so, so if, if that happened, you wouldn't be alcohol-free anymore. <laughs> You'd be making your own. Oh, that would be bad. So the Daily Dozen from Dr. Greger, I'll read you that from his book, um, are beans and berries, other fruits, cruciferous vegetables, greens and other vegetables, flax seeds, nuts, spices, because you guys, there's a lot of antioxidants in spices whole grains, uh, beverages, and that's going to be caffeine-free, and exercise. So that's his daily... So the, well, your world salt substitutes spice is actually making my world more well. There you go. Because it's antioxidant that's ingredients. That's it. Wow. Okay. I so, told you the stardust was magical. It is. Right. So also, you know, herbs, we want to remember to, to, to eat fresh herbs too, or, or dried herbs, because they are full of um, antioxidants. Yeah. They're good for us. I mean, medi medicine started with herbs. It Gina, started from the plant kingdom. Gina is asking, do, do you ever see folks using the NSV acronym? NSV. Oh, non-scale victories. Yeah. Yes. That kind of was that was around a lot during your weight loss phase. It was. And and it was a common point of discussion in your in your weight loss. Months. Yes. Yes. So, uh, and yeah. That's, the that's NSVs. Kind of a chef AJ that's a good one. Uses that one a lot. Yeah. And um, uh, JP uses that one a lot. Yes. Much. Yeah, that's a good one. Thank you for sharing that. The NSVs, non-scale victories. Collectively, victories. we can remember a lot of stuff. We can as a group. That's why this. That's why this um, community is so amazing because 
we help each other remember and stay on track. Okay. Which is really good. So, so if you want to help spread the word about all these acronyms to people that are maybe new to the plant base, give Tammy's video here a little thumbs up, which will entice YouTube to share it more and perhaps educate some more people about all these wonderful plant-based acronyms. So And expose people to more of the um, plant-based community, the doctors and so forth, mm -hmm. in the plant-based community. And you guys, so many of the plant-based doctors now are doing telehealth. And that means that you can schedule a visit with them, either on the phone or through Zoom, and you can you know, have a consultation with a plant-based physician. So, so many people write to us that are having an issue with cholesterol or um, diabetes or just a whole plethora of health issues. And which of course, we, we are not um, medical people. We can't help with that. But you can very easily schedule a, a online or on the phone consult with a plant-based doctor so you can go to the true north health center um, website and they have a lot of doctors there that are doing telehealth now dr clapper also does it pcrm i believe has mm -hmm. a group um i have a list but i don't i don't have that with me right now of all the different groups where you can get a, a consult with a plant-based doctor so if you are having issues with cholesterol, you've been doing this um, plant-based eating for a while and you're having some issues with cholesterol or triglycerides or um, low vitamin D or whatever it is, I think it's a good idea to have a consult with a plant-based physician um, because they have a little bit different perspective on it than maybe your um, primary care physician who doesn't know anything about plant-based and what happens when you first go plant-based. Because some people, uh, initially will have a little bit higher uh, cholesterol um, you know because your body is pulling that out and, and working on it and it's in the system and um, some people are shocked by that when it happens do you have a question ts has a question during weight loss phase is it better to stay away from some of the recipes and stick to the uh, to the, stick to the left of the red wine well it's absolutely better to stay to the left of that red line. You want to stay at 600 calories or less um, it takes, it takes on the, calorie density. Yeah, it takes the avocado out of the equation. It takes nuts a, a, and a seeds. lot of the nuts and seeds out of the equation. So, um, so during weight loss, yes. And you, you'll hear, you know, I hear Chef AJ make the distinction that if you're um, in, in the phase of weight loss right now, some of these, you know, the, a, a particular recipe, some of Tammy's recipes are not optimal for weight loss. They're healthy, uh, but, and they might be using some nuts or some avocado or something, but they're not a weight loss recipe. Um, so for, uh, and you have to know yourself too. And in the blog, you'll make mention of that, that this is a, an occasional family dessert recipe that's, you know, you'll, well, most of my desserts are pretty healthy yeah. and you could have well, those. all your food's healthy, but, but it's, it's just a matter of looking at the ingredients and seeing where they lie on the calorie density chart, going, okay, this is a weight loss, a weight loss one. Yeah, which most of mine are yeah. using the low calorie density foods. I would say where people are gonna run into an issue with is making the desserts at all, even if they're healthy desserts, even if they're all, yeah. they include the ingredients that are 600 calories or less per pound because they're more of a treat and you're combining a lot of different ingredients and it tastes sweet, um, you know, because I do use dates mm -hmm. in some of the recipes uh, I, I like and they might be a trigger for people and cause them to overeat. Yeah. You know, if you make my chocolate cherry brownies, it makes eight servings. I put them in the freezer. I have one serving at a time. Maybe I one don't, a week. I was going to say, and I don't have it every day, but if that's a trigger for you, don't make, it. Don't make them. But on the other, by contrast though, my Chipotle nacho cheese sauce that I make from her recipe, I will quickly add, it's carrots and it's potatoes. And so eat up. It's carrots and potatoes. Right. Uh, but, you know, we dispense it out because it, once we get it made, it's, it's so tasty and then it goes on, it goes on 
our potatoes for like the nacho smashed potato recipe, one of those things. It feels and tastes very decadent. It feels like, wow, I'm really cheating here. But it, you're not. It's carrots and potatoes. Mm -hmm. But it feels very rich. So Right. So that's an amazing recipe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so better to and, stick and it's with. It's far left of the red line. It's not a problem. Sorry. That's okay. So it's better to maybe not make the dessert recipes when you're in the weight loss mm -hmm. um, phase because, you know, we're not eating the desserts because we're hungry, right? We're eating them because they're dessert. I'm, I'm not saying, oh my gosh, I'm starving. I'm going to eat a chocolate cherry brownie. Um, I'm eating the chocolate cherry brownie because I want that sensation of having a mm -hmm. treat. And so probably better to stick with fruit for your desserts when you're in the weight loss phase. Um, you know, especially I think in the beginning when you're first adjusting and mm -hmm. adopting uh, new habits and a new lifestyle and not to be relying on all the homemade treats. So just because, you know, we can eat a lot more of those. I mean, you know, Chef AJ says if, if you know, if kale, if kale doesn't sound good, then you're not really hungry. Because if you're really, if you have true hunger, then anything will satisfy it. But, but, you know, some people can't have like the tropical fruits around because they'll overeat on the tropical fruits because the tropical fruits like um, pineapple and papaya. papaya and mango and you know those have a higher sugar content and you know they can be a trigger so you have to know yourself too have you there's some uh, conversation going on here about doctors uh, and me here Randy's answering it about doctors being in a different state uh, like doctors at true uh, north health that are doing the telephone the telehealth mm -hmm. consultations talking to somebody from Tennessee are, are they licensed to do? You know, I think every state is a little bit different. And so some of the physicians um, are able to do consults in um, they, various states. They have states. to register. And that's what Randy's saying here is that you have to look at the credentials of the doctor if they're licensed to, to um, what states they're licensed to do telehealth consultation. And that's a that's very good right. question. Mm -hmm. It is a good question. So, so yeah, Randy is saying they have doctors that are licensed in every state. Not every doctor can practice in every state. So you have to look mm -hmm. to see if they practice in your state. Right. So excellent, excellent question. Yeah. Okay. So, well, listen, miss, we have been on here for what time uh, is over it? an hour. And I'm starting to think about my chopped salad. Oh, well, and, I also wanted to dressing. share. I want... Do I still have ranch dressing? Mm, I no, think I you do. I have one serving left. I think you do. I ate all of my ranch dressing. So um, we've been getting a lot of positive feedback. Is there feedback. any Caesar dressing? Yes, we have Caesar. Because I, I made two batches on... Because we, we had a problem. We were making the video oh, for the Caesar that dressing. That was so funny. <laughs> and there were, the, the sound cut out. She was halfway through the new Caesar dressing video. And she had put the tofu in and put some liquid in and and had dumped and the the, uh, a couple of the ingredients in. And then I, I was checking my ear monitors and there was no sound. I was horrified. And so I did, I did, I did a cut and then I had to say, I'm sorry, the sound went out. The, you know, the battery, you know, we have these microphones, they work well, but they're, they are dependent on batteries. And I've gone to the factory to say, don't you have one that like plugs in and just stays on? But they don't. We have to use batteries. So anyway, so we had to take all of that and set it aside and start over, over. With the video. And, but then she had a half made batch. And so we actually finished out both batches after the shoot was over. And so now we have lots of Caesar dressing. We to do. Eat. So you have one serving of ranch left, and then we have two two full recipes of, of Caesar. the Caesar. So we'll be eating a lot of Caesar dressing this week. Okay. Um, and um, Tiffany, Randy, and Jesse. Jesse. Um, see, it's the end of the day, and I'm losing my train of thought. Uh, we were texting, and they were saying that they really like to use uh, butternut squash when they make cheese, the vegan cheese recipes. And so I want you guys to know you inspired me. I oven roasted some butternut squash the other day. And then yesterday I made the chipotle nacho cheese sauce 
and I didn't have enough to use all butternut squash. So I used two cups of butternut squash and one cup of Yukon gold potatoes. And then I didn't tell Tom what I did, but when he came in the kitchen, I said, taste this. And he was like, wow, it tastes kind of sweet. It's a richer and a little bit sweet to it. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit creamier. Mm-hmm. And a little bit richer. So thank you guys for um, suggesting that. So you can make my chipotle nacho cheese sauce with oven roasted butternut squash. And it is amazing. Amazing. Randy says that we can send the extra excess seeds to Tennessee. <laughs> I wish we could. Can you guys just, you guys just move close. Just move close. Move to our neighborhood. There is a house for sale up the street. So somebody plant-based could buy that. Oh, do you still have and your be a neighbor. butternut squash? Yeah, it's right over here. Yeah, Randy says that she ate a whole butternut squash. You know, we grew our own this year. Can you, There's can, two of them over you, there. Yeah, I'll get it. You so, probably shouldn't move. Yeah, you've got to see this butternut. Our our grandkids <laughs> love this butternut squash I brought in. They, well, first uh, there's this one. Yeah, I grew this. This is my butternut. It's not huge, but none of them in the store this year. Oh, am I on screen? Yeah, I am. None of them in the store this year are big. And then I came in with this one where they were here and they loved it. <laughs> Well, tell them why that one's so little. Well, this is a second growth. The vine did its thing and dried up, and you know we harvested maybe a half a dozen of these. And then the vine kind of put it throughout some more blooms, and it grew this silly little thing. So. And then the vine died. And then so. the vine died, and so I harvested it. But it's the right color and stuff. Yeah. And then you're supposed to not eat these. You're supposed to let them sit for a couple of weeks at room temperature. and, and To you know, kind of cure yeah, and like at an outdoor normal, like 80 degrees, not like six, not 70 degrees mm. in the house. That's why I left them in the garage for a couple of weeks so that they kind of finish doing their starch conversion inside, whatever they go through. So yeah, that's our... Well, this one we can cut in half and I can oven roast it and then we'll share it. Yeah. You can have half and I can have half. And this one we're going to paint a face on and use it as a decoration for Halloween. There so. you go. The kids will like that. Okay. That'll be fun. So right. let's see. What else do we have um, that's coming up? <laughs> Randy says this is bigger than the one that she ate. So. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's so cute. Isn't it cute? Um, yeah, we have coming up. What do we have coming up? I don't know. That's why I was asking. Um, I am going to be sending out another email. Um in the next uh, couple of days, maybe mm -hmm. tomorrow, uh, about Integrated Medicine. The the Integrated Medicine group is putting on kind of a global, uh, you know, Integrated Medicine, uh, food is medicine, getting in the front, uh, on the front end of being healthy. Uh, I got the links to this um, several, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and I was trying to sort out whether it was directed at medical professionals. Uh, uh, it talks a lot to medical professionals and healthcare providers and health coaches, but then it also talks about why am I? Is there a picture in picture? Why am I up oh, there in the corner? Because you're twice as important, <laughs> so you get two pictures. Good, sorry, thank you. Good sorry. Time. That's your little window for when I'm using the showing the computer. Um, that's the same window that 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 Reeves hangs out in on while your world's um, uh, broadcast. Right. So, what was I talking about? Anyway. In the in the in the copy, they're talking about if you're a patient, be, you know, talk to your doctor about integrated medicine. So it looks, you know, it looks like they're covering the full gamut. So I'm going to go ahead and release that information to everybody because I was confused on who I was supposed to be sharing it with initially. Right. Uh, so I didn't send it out before, and then I did put on today's newsletter uh, a reminder about the Plant Fit Summit, which is which is about ourselves, you know, uh, adapting to a plant, uh, taking care of ourselves eating a good diet, coping with with life in general. Right. So that summit's coming up here in uh, in six days, actually. That starts mm -hmm. the end of next week. That Chef, a, a J, Chef AJ is in that. There's quite a few of our, you know, usual educators in that group. There's a bunch of them this year. That's the fifth one that we've done with Better Life Summits. Um, that's the same group that mm -hmm. did, you know, the... the Truth about weight loss and and some of the others. So yeah, those are those yeah. are all very good. And then there was something else. Um, there was something else brewing that um, we were going to put in an email. I don't remember what it was now. I don't know. Can you talk for a minute? I'm going to think. You're gonna... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Tom thinks. I see smoke. <laughs> There's smoke over there. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know you had to sh shut yourself off. So. 
so you can go over and think. I'm but processing. You're processing. Okay, well, don't burn out, honey. <laughs> so funny. So, ah, uh, okay. I'm gonna read comments here for a minute. Okay. All right. So we've been talking about things that we want to do. Um, next year, you know, we're winding down on this year and, and we've been really busy with family stuff this year. And so we're talking about the things that we want to do. Some, we want to do some cooking classes, which I know we talked about that all through the pandemic, but our life just got too busy with family things. And so, um, you know, we want to do some online cooking classes and we're even toying with um, doing uh, like a maybe a four week weight loss class um, or if you don't have weight to lose it could be just you know trying to get on program and eating healthy and so we've been talking a lot about that you want to put yourself back on screen or no I'm still uh, okay <laughs> Uh, and I didn't know you couldn't think if the camera was on you. That's interesting. Um, decision fatigue, is that hit? I just was feeling shy suddenly. <laughs> is that what it was? No, I'm frustrated because I had one of those things in my head. I had a thought in my head that I was going to mention after we finished the subject we were on. Yeah, and now and, you can't think of it. And then I lost it. it, so now I'm just a, I'm a little frustrated. Okay, I totally get it. It happens to okay. me all the time. So anyway, so we're also thinking about... Um, maybe doing an online four-week um, class either for, you know, um, just getting your health back on track or to lose weight. Um, but I'm thinking maybe that we can do that like in January. Um, we could do that similar to the classes that we used to hold pre-pandemic in our house where we would do it for four, like we did it on Saturdays, four Saturdays in a row and then I cooked dinner for everybody so I cooked dinner for like 18 people um, and that and that we only had the West Coast time zone because it was local but if we do an online class nationally then we have to figure, figure out, out a time, time. That, that serves the East Coast and the West Coast yeah and whether and, Saturday and, or Sunday is the better day so yeah. when we did the in-person classes our local groups that um, joined they preferred Saturday. Saturday afternoon into Saturday evening right so we, it was a three hour that was a three hour three to four hour gig yeah sometimes they would stay till nine o'clock and yeah. visit um, so, so I wouldn't be cooking dinner for you that you could eat, but I think I would still do a cooking demonstration. I will eat it. <laughs> and, you know, just so, um, so that people would, at the end, you would have four menus that you would be able to use, like when you're going to just cook for your family or entertain or what have you. But, um, in thinking about doing that with our, you know, wide audience, um, trying to pick a time that would work to do a live show um, every week for people. Um, that's what we've been debating about. Like, should it be on Saturday or should it be Sunday? We know it needs to be on the weekend, mm -hmm. um, but it has to be accessible for the people on the East Coast. Yeah. So we can't do it too late in the day or it'll be too late for people to cook along with me if they wanted to cook along with me. So... Hmm. Well, that's why mid morning jumped to mind. If ten o'clock here is like one o'clock there, is that right? We'd have to do all of our food prep the day before then. Yeah. Um, because that wouldn't allow us to get our food prep. The thing about doing it in the afternoon, yeah. When we did the live class, was we had the morning yeah. to and, do the and food this would prep. Be, uh, this one would be a. A, a, a series, you know, like a four a, a month long yeah. series class with lecture and and, 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 food. and, and four consecutive Saturdays mm -hmm. and and for like folks that were part of Dylan's menu club you know two Saturdays it would it would conflict with that mm -hmm. but it's a short-term thing so we try to always be respectful about what else is going on um, with our plant-based partners but uh, mm -hmm. but sometimes we're gonna um, well we would talk to them about that and figure out yeah because that we might have to go at the same time as AJ or as Dylan on on, on one or two of them on yeah. Saturday, but it's a, it's going to be a smaller group. It's not like it's going to be two hundred people on there. It would be a um, they typically watch any one of those 
uh, live, you know, people right. watch things live. Uh, right. It, you know, we might affect 20 or 30 of them or whatever. Well, I so. thought it would be nice to be able to do it live so that people could ask questions. Oh, absolutely. If we do, if we pre-recorded it, then people could watch it whenever they wanted yeah. to, but then they wouldn't be yeah. able to the ask Emilis questions. Any thoughts you have about doing the Zoom where you can have direct interaction, on-screen interaction uh, with voice and with video? or whether we did it on a unlisted live YouTube uh, mm -hmm. dependent on chat. I was kind of leaning towards the Zoom so you could like raise your hand and, and address your question to the whole group in that kind of environment to more closely emulate virtually what we were doing with the live and in person. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking of... of you you know, like kind of like the Zoom idea. Yeah, because we... You'd have to mute everybody so that... And then folks can raise their hand. Yeah. yeah. Then and that could that could work. Okay, and I would, wear my, people, I would wear my reading glasses. Okay, well we'll figure that out. We don't need like, to figure that out on their time. No, uh, I know, but I I'm I want to get their input. Yeah, Zoom Zoom where you can have direct interaction or a chat. If we were going to do some kind of paid course, uh, that was going to be multiple sessions. That's our our basic question. Yeah. So. And would you prefer it on Saturday? Or Sunday and um, like what time do you think is good and let us know if you're yeah, easy. Diane saying yes do zoom Gina says yes do zoom TS says yes to zoom oh so that's three for three mm-hmm and are you guys East Coast or West Coast because we're also trying to figure out yeah we get the best time we get charts and, and it, it, you know it kind of wraps the country there's a big chunk in the Northeast then done on into Florida Across the south through through Texas, uh, it gets pretty scarce in Louisiana, Arkansas area. But then when you get into Texas, the Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, uh, Austin area, that picks up pretty heavy again. We have a lot of followers there. A bunch there. of folks in Los Angeles, and then a bunch of folks in up and down all of the West Coast states. We don't get a lot of traffic from Wyoming or South Dakota. <laughs> Uh, Not a lot of plant-based eaters or, there, I or guess. North Dakota. There's some folks in Minnesota, and there's a good chunk of folks from Michigan, actually. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to leave anybody out. Please, I'm not trying to choose favorite states here, but but it, it's it's just like the grocery store. What all is the, like the grocery All the processed store? food is in the middle, and the good stuff is around the edge. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I thought, where is he going with this? Our audience is all around the perimeter of the country. You're right. It uh, is. And not so much in the center. It's true. But if you're from Omaha, Nebraska, we're glad you're here. <laughs> At least, or if you're from Casper, Wyoming. Or Iowa. We're, we're glad you're here. Yeah, we love the Midwest. We're yeah. from the Midwest, and we love the Midwest. So what are other people saying? Because I'm curious, like, I'm wondering, like, time. What time of day? Well, Jolene is saying uh, prefers Zoom and Eastern Time Zone. Um, but like, yeah. you know, if we do Eastern, I'm wondering like if we went on at twelve. Yeah. Like what would happen or that kind of thing. Yeah. Gina likes my grocery store analogy. I do too. I thought that was really good. I thought okay. that was a really good analogy. Um, okay, JL's asking, uh, what, what, on the Zoom, would you see each other or just you guys? You can see us, absolutely. You have the ability to turn your camera on or off. Mm -hmm. You'll go to a lot of Zoom calls, you'll just see people's name up there, and your name that displays is whatever name you put in. And then you have the choice of having your video on or not. You can unmute yourself on the microphone, and you can talk to us. Uh, if you want to be engaged face to face, then that is your option. There's no push one way or another on that. Right. So of course we'd we'd love to to see people, but if you. Um, but if you don't want to be seen yeah. on Zoom, you don't have, have to. to. Yeah. You can keep your camera turned off, but you can still um, see everyone else that that is allowing themselves to In be the seen. Gallery view, yeah. And and you can. Um, he, watch us of course and you can hear everything yeah so um okay. but you don't have to you don't have to um be yeah on camera so if you're watching this uh if you're watching this program on the replay because we've been kind of ambling around here for a little bit drop us an email to tammy at nutmegnobook.com or tom at nutmegnobook.com we're talking about doing a a fee-based uh weight loss class uh weight loss verse. slash healthy Weight, weight loss slash healthy eating. Mm -hmm. um, we did two of those in a row last year, and that we had a couple of repeats in the second class that were 
wanting to just get the material again, right? Um, and have it really, you know, really own it mm -hmm. and, and as a refresher. So, and then a couple of folks took it that weren't there for weight loss; they were just there for healthy eating, right? So, so anyway, so we're talking about doing that, uh, getting back to doing that, except uh, opening it up to where people across the country can participate in it. So, yeah. with that, we better get going here. I'm, I'm really ready for my salad. You're really hungry, huh? Yeah, I'm ready for my salad too with Caesar dressing. Okay. So everybody, thank you so much. Moderators, thank you so much. Uh, you had one very busy troll. Boy, they really uh, did a bunch of stuff in the quick succession, but wow. they got taken care of. So um, so thank you for, for doing that. Yep, and this has been really fun, you guys. And we had a really fun talk this morning. So um, those of you who joined us this morning for our Facebook Live, we didn't walk and talk. We actually did a tea and talk because um, Tom hurt his back this week and he's suffering from a uh, he re-injured an old injury when he was trying to pull up a tree root so we did um a really fun facebook talk this morning a, from the a, backyard it's a it's a c2 sd between l4 and l5 <laughs> which, is a, which is a class two slip disc between uh lumbar four and lumbar five vertebrae so, yeah, so he wasn't able to walk, so we just did a really fun um, talk this morning, and that it was really great, and people seemed to really enjoy it. So you can watch the replay over on the Nutmeg Notebook Facebook page as well. Okay. So that's it. All right. Thanks for joining us, you guys, and thank you to thank our you moderators. I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get, get healthy, healthy and, and stay healthy, healthy one, one meal, meal at, at a time. Bye-bye. See you next time. Love you guys.